This is pre-calculus section 5.5, modeling harmonic motion. So this is our last section of notes for chapter five. Woohoo, we're almost done. Okay, so today we're going to do some applications of sine and cosine. Harmonic motion can be modeled by either of those functions, and which one we choose depends on the circumstances. Okay, so if the equation describing the displacement y of an object at time t is either given as y equals a sine, and that curvy kind of w is called omega t, or y equals a times cosine of omega t, then the object is in simple harmonic motion. Okay, now our a value, the absolute value of a from our equation is our amplitude. So that's still our maximum displacement of the object. So basically that's going to be a vertical stretch or a vertical compression, just like it was before. Our period now is 2 pi over omega. So basically for these equations, a little note here, for harmonic motion, K is called omega, and that's that kind of curvy W, okay? So omega is K. It does the same thing. It changes our period, right? Our period for sine and cosine is always 2 pi divided by K, but now with these harmonic motion application problems, our period is going to be 2 pi over omega. That is going to be our time required to complete complete one cycle. So they can give us information about the period in terms of period, but they could also give us information about our period in terms of frequency. Frequency is the number of cycles per unit of time. So if you notice, time required to complete one cycle, number of cycles per unit of time, those two things are reciprocals of each other. So period is 2 pi over omega, frequency is omega over 2 pi, the reciprocal of period. So note that you would use a sine function when the motion begins with zero displacement, and you would use cosine when the motions begin with maximum displacement at the amplitude. And if you think about that, that should make sense, right? Because when we graph our sine function, our sine function starts at zero. When we graph our cosine function, our cosine function starts at our maximum displacement. So that's why zero displacement uses sine, maximum displacement uses cosine. That's going to be given in the problem. You just have to read it and figure out which function you're supposed to use. Let's look at example one. Find a function that models simple harmonic motion having the given properties. Assume that the displacement is at its max at time t equals zero. So right here, those words, displacement is at its max, tells us that we're going to be writing equation in terms of cosine, okay? That's what that tells us. We know that our amplitude is six feet for part A, so that gives us A equals six. They tell us that our period is two seconds. Now remember, our period is equal to two pi divided by omega. So two, is equal to 2 pi over omega. We need to find omega. So if we were to cross multiply here, we get 2 times omega equals 2 pi. So we find out that omega is equal to pi. Well, now we have both of the pieces of information that we need, right? We have our a and we have our omega. So putting these into our equation, which is y equals a times cosine of omega t, when we plug those in, our answer, our equation that represents this story problem is y equals 6 times cosine of pi t. Part B, we're still starting with displacement at its maximum, so we're still going to be using cosine. They've given us our amplitude, so we know that our A is 10. But this time they've told us that our frequency is 5. So remember, frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. It's the reciprocal of period. 
So 5 is going to be equal to omega divided by 2 pi. Once again, we're going to cross multiply. So 5 times 2 pi is 10 pi. 1 times omega is omega. So we know our a is 10. We know our omega is 10 pi. So our equation is going to be y equals our a value is 10 times cosine of omega pi, or sorry, omega t, so 10 pi t. Example two, find a function that models simple harmonic motion having the given properties. Assume that the displacement is at zero. That tells us we're going to use sine at time t equals zero. Our amplitude is 20. There we go. A is 20. Our period is 4 seconds. Remember again, period is equal to 2 pi over omega. So 4 is equal to 2 pi over omega. We cross multiply. We get 4 omega equals 2 pi. We divide by 4. So we get omega is equal to 2 over 4 reduces to pi over 2. So omega is equal to pi over 2. A is equal to 20. Plug that into our equation. Remember, we're using sine. So y equals 20 times sine of pi over 2. T. Part B, amplitude is 3. So our A value is 3. This time they're giving us frequency of 60. So remember, frequency is going to be equal to omega over 2 pi. So 60 equals omega over 2 pi. We cross multiply. 60 times 2 pi is going to be 120 pi equals omega. So there's our omega. We have our A. We're ready to write our function. It's going to be y equals 3 times sine of 120 pi t. And we're done. Our last example today is a true application problem. You will see one of these on your practice test. You will see one of these on your test. A Ferris wheel, 20 feet in diameter, makes one revolution every 20 seconds. Okay, what does that tell us right there? One revolution every 20 seconds tells us that our period is 20 seconds. Okay. The bottom of the wheel is three feet above the ground. That's going to be critical information. We'll talk about that in the middle. If it takes you 10 seconds to reach the top of the wheel once the ride starts, Find a model that represents height above the ground as a function of time. All right, so they're telling us that our minimum height is at three feet, okay, because we've got three feet above the ground. We know that, okay? So I am going to start here by making a little sketch. Okay, here's my x and y axis. I know that the bottom of my Ferris wheel is at 3 feet. So the bottom is not on the x axis, nor is it at 0, right? The bottom of my Ferris wheel is at 3 feet. And the top is going to be somewhere up here, right? And then I've got this, this Ferris wheel right here, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do here is... Sorry for the interruption. Okay, um, if we go back to the problem, it says that the Ferris wheel is 20 feet in diameter. So the first thing that we're going to do, whoops, there we go, 20 feet in diameter. First thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the top. Well, if the bottom of the Ferris wheel is 3 feet above the ground, that means that the top of the Ferris wheel, if it's 20 feet high, has to be 23 feet above the ground, right? So that information right there is going to help us figure out our a value because we know that the value right in between 3 and 23 which happens to be 13 
is going to basically be the center of our function here. And we just have to figure out now, what is this distance? What is the distance between 13 and 3? Well, that's 10. What is the distance between 13 and 23? Well, that's 10. So that tells us that if our max height is at 23, and our minimum height is at 3, that our A value is 10. Okay, so we've got A. The next thing is we need to know what is our period, or what is, sorry, what is our omega? We know that our period is given, it's 20 seconds, okay? So that's going to tell us that 20 is going to be equal to 2 pi over omega. If we cross multiply, we get 20 omega equals 2 pi. We divide by 20, and we end up with omega equals pi over 10. All right, so now we know A and we know omega, okay? So we're almost there. The last thing that we need to think about is we have a vertical shift here. And the way that you determine your vertical shift is, normally our function is centered on the x-axis. Like normally the center of our Ferris wheel would be at zero, zero. But the center of our Ferris wheel is not at zero, zero. The center of our Ferris wheel is at 13. So that tells us, and you know, that just kind of comes from the picture and the information and the problem, that we have a vertical shift up 13. Okay? So this is going to be a sine function. Okay? We've got y equals a sine omega t plus we are going to have an h value because we have a vertical shift and you might be asking why sine oh and by the way i want you to cross out this if it takes you 10 seconds to reach the top of the wheel we're simplifying this problem a little bit i apologize i should have told you that at the start of the problem we're simplifying that a little bit that actually creates a phase shift and we're not going to worry about that okay there won't be a phase shift on your practice test or on your test, so you can just disregard that. I just want you to be able to do the work that we just did. Okay, so we're going to assume that basically you're starting at zero displacement on this ride, so you're the person that's in the seat right there, okay? If we're starting at zero displacement, that's why we're going to use a sine function. So now we just have to plug everything in. We're almost there. Y equals our A value is 10. Sine of omega, which is pi over 10, times t plus 13, okay? And that is going to give you your equation for this Ferris wheel problem.